Details matter, and the attention to detail that Elden Ring shows is incredible. Here are some details you might not have noticed about Elden Ring. If you hit a troll in the face with an arrow, it will stun the enemy and stop it from any other animation that it's in. You'll notice that if you run through poison, you'll have a meter that fills up. When this meter becomes full, you'll be poisoned and take damage. If you run through the poison and get out of the poison, the meter will recede back down, but if you roll through the poison, it will gradually keep going up due to the fact that it is on your armor or clothes. When you're trying to get through lava, it'll slow you down. But if you use the quick step weapon skill while wielding a dagger, you'll be able to move more quickly across the lava. The relic in the sacred relic sword makes a lot more sense once you realize that the hilt looks like someone doing the inner order gesture. This is further backed up in the item description where it reads, sword wrought from the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. The miners actually stop mining whenever you take the stone in front of them. No need for them to be working overtime. You've probably noticed the trolls that pull the carriages through the lands between or the ones that just randomly wander about have a uh, rather interesting midsection. According to the lore, they are actually the descendants of the giants, like the fire giant you have to battle later in the game. You know, the one with the big creepy eye that comes out in phase two of the fight? Yeah, that one. Apparently, the stomachs of the trolls are gouged out due to them betraying the flame and having the fell god abandon them. If you weren't able to beat Renala on your first attempt, then you understand how long it takes you to get back to that boss fight. No grace and no stake of America anywhere around. Apparently, this is because Renala's husband is Radagon, and Radagon left her for Queen Merica. Awkward. So it kind of makes sense that there would be a stake of America nearby. The mushroom sorcerer enemies actually get a buff whenever poison is procced in close proximity to them. The chanting winged dames that are singing are actually singing in Latin, and if you translate their song, it's uh, kind of depressing. You can find Placid Dusax's skeleton in Ferrum Azula. We know that it is actually the Dragon Lord skeleton due to the missing horn. In Radon's boss fight, you're able to summon a whole bunch of NPCs to help you take on the general. One of the NPCs you're able to summon is Patches, a reoccurring character in FromSoft games. Because Patches is Patches, he'll summon in and then quickly dip out. This one's a bit dark. The bodies that are crucified throughout the lands between can be heard groaning and being in obvious pain, meaning that they are still alive and still suffering. Side note, we were only able to hear them make noises at nighttime. The details in Elden Ring aren't just limited to what you see while running around the lands between. The map has some surprisingly intricate details, such as the waterfall that can be seen in-game as well as clearly detailed on the map. When you defeat a dragon, you get dragon hearts. These hearts are used to learn dragon-based incantations. To do this, you must consume one of the dragon hearts, and by doing that, your tarnished eyes actually change to the eyes of the dragon. After you defeat Godric, Gostok will stomp and trash talks Godric's withered corpse. To the bone, pushing me about like that, and after all that grafting, where did that get you? Gostok is missing a hand thanks to Godric. That explains all the stomping and ill words for Godric earlier. If you die in Stormvale Castle, Gostok will take 30% of your runes, and the slimy character is also the one that locks you in the room with the knight and then proceeds to laugh about it. After you defeat Rykard, you can find Tanith eating Rykard's head. You can take out the chariots by shooting down the pots that are hanging from the ceiling, as long as you time it right, that is. 
You can coerce a dragon to break apart these glowing statues that actually contain items in them. It seems like a lot of work for a Smithing Stone 5, but a cool detail nonetheless. There is no sun in Elden Ring. There's a moon, but there's no sun, and all the light comes directly from the Erd Tree itself. You can use those pesky golem arrow attacks to your advantage. Just put an enemy between you and the arrow, and boom, problem solved. If you hit an imp with a crystal dart, it will attack everything around it, including you, so make sure that you get out of the way. And this same strategy can also be used on the burial watchdogs. Attacking an enemy that is unaware will have you dealing an extra 25% more damage. With rapiers and curved swords, if you press the dodge button while holding a heavy attack, you will attack and then very quickly move backwards. This can be very useful in PvP fights. You know the annoying skeleton enemies that you always have to hit one extra time to make sure that they don't get back up? Well, if you defeat them with holy damage, they won't be able to get back up. Just Thanos snapped out of existence. If you do the erudition gesture with one of the glintstone crowns equipped, the jewels on the top of the headpiece will glow. This can be used to open some doors across the lands between. After defeating an enemy, there will be some particle effects and streams that fly around. The color of these effects is an indicator of whether the enemy will have an item that you can pick up off of their body. Miners with a bag on their back will explode if hit with fire. If you're close to an edge and attack, you won't fall while attacking. If you're wielding a sword in one hand and a shield in the other, you can actually attack and block at the same time by hitting the block and attack buttons at the same time. You can drop off of ladders by pressing the dodge button. When you're fighting weak enemies, you can stagger them by rolling or jumping into them. Against those pesky flying enemies, you can use your horse to jump and attack them in midair. Level the playing field a bit. Bow attacks are faster while jumping or right after dodging. M fire statues can be stopped if you hit it with an arrow. You can prevent from destroying jars or tables by jumping on them from a further distance. You can double, triple, or infinitely drink your flask if you hit square or whatever use button you have right after a drink has finished. The attention to detail on the Blasphemous Blade is remarkable. With all of the little appendages being animated, it leaves you in awe and also a little freaked out. If you kill the Demi-Human leader first, the other Demi-Humans will be frightened. So those are some details in Elden Ring that we thoroughly enjoyed and thought it was worth bringing attention to. If there's any details you thought we missed, Make sure to let us know down in the comments, and if you enjoyed, consider liking the video and subscribing for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one.